and we're live hello everyone hello hello please join us here if you're just noticing this on your linkedin feed or everywhere you're watching because this is going to be fabulous fabulous event uh this is about finaps on nups all right if you don't know us by now please follow nups as we speak just to get it out of the way because this is a fantastic team making extremely wonderful efforts, getting thin apps education out, getting capabilities out, getting uh, awareness, awareness for the thin apps discipline that helps companies to manage cloud costs, to optimize cloud costs and reach their cloud goals, frankly. And today, our speaker, our guest, an esteemed business leader, Tim Cassell. Tim, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks, Irene. And first of all, everybody out there, I can't see you, but thank you for your time. Exactly. For us to know that you're there, please comment. Okay. We do need to know where you're joining from, what brought you here, what kind of phase of FinApp's journey you are at. Meaning that if you're just educating yourself, if your company already knows the value of FinApp's, knows the value of managing cloud costs the right way, if you want to know like deeper tips, because today we're going to be talking about best practices. But guess what? We'll start somewhere. We'll start with state of thin apps because team talks to customers all the time. Team develops the product all the time. Team knows. All right. So mm -hmm. let us know in the comments, the questions. We'll answer them live. But to open it up, team, what's the state of thin apps in your mind this early February morning uh, 2023? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Irene. Yeah. I mean, as we head into, <clears throat> excuse me, as we head into the new year, I mean, we're already in, we're already in February and I can't even believe that. Um, but basically, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the, some of the things that I'm seeing out there and the challenges um, uh, as people are heading into the new year. You know, I mean, it's no, it's no secret out there in the world that you know it's there's a lot of uncertainty right there's you know i live in the bay area right i mean there's been a ton of uh tech layoffs um and a lot of people are focusing on on how to um you know lever you know basically reduce their cost in a variety of different areas and obviously that one of the main areas is is not just the people side but it's also the infrastructure in which it which their uh, their stuff uh, runs on right and so, you know, what we're seeing, you know, we're just talking to our customers and we're getting a lot of, you know, a lot of people coming to us to, to, to leverage uh, our solution uh, and how we attack these problems. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing, you know, when we get in some of these meetings, and I'll talk about a couple, couple of challenges that I see out there is, uh, you know, I'll just hit on them and I'll dig a little bit deeper into them, but basically, you know, the first, the first, some of these challenges that we have is, you know, there's, you know, they come in and they, they, they got to reduce costs, but there's, there's really no, you know, business context to it. Right. You know, of, you know, they're looking at something and they really don't understand how it's going to impact our, their business. And so it makes this a, a very challenging exercise, right. Cause you have no idea if that number is good or, or bad. Um, and so, you know, we want to help our customers, uh, with that, um, you know, we're seeing, a, you know, even even then the economy is that people are looking at the cloud as, you know, as as a great way to to reduce that. So we're seeing a hell of a lot. Sorry, I, you know, guys, I'm from West Virginia, so who knows what's coming up right now? Uh, a lot of migrations. Right. And uh, a lot of migrations uh, and, and some of the ch what we're seeing of, of, of the challenges that and then then for existing customers out there and they got, you know, maybe they have the contacts and they got they got a good solution. Um, you know, they want to make these cuts and they made some decisions out there with commitments that make it very difficult to to actually reduce those. And so, you know. To what we we're focused here at NOPS is is trying to help our customers through the through any any time right I mean if you look at COVID right it's like you know COVID you know you know if you can believe it it's, it's it was three years ago right and initially there was uh, some cut cost things and all of a sudden we saw the economy kind of taken off right so a lot of people made decisions back then 
um, you know, as their, their companies were growing and uh, making these commitments and, and, and not really, you know, it's always good when you're making commitments when things are great, but, you know, it really locks you in when things are not so great, right? And so here at NOPS, we're trying to help our customers, uh, you know, not make those same mistakes moving forward and, and helping them have that flexibility to, to, to basically control costs as they go up you know, and, and making, you know, as, as the revenue or whatever is going up and being able to save there. And then also having the flexibility if things uh, turn, turn, turn down. Right. So controlling costs sounds good. Okay. Sounds good and easy. All right. So Tim, let's start with kind of bigger picture. It's very of course, no brainer, piece of cake, right? Uh, you know what? Uh, why don't we like to, to take the big picture look first? You know, what does it take to adapt FinApps? Because again, it's people, it's technology, it's processes, right? It's changing mindset. So, how, what do you see working, not working? We're, we're going to get to best practices. So, to the audience, stay with us. But for now, yeah, what does it take to adapt? Yeah, I, I think the number one thing. <laughs> before you go down this 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 big cost cutting or cost optimization or whatever you want to call it right is you know keep in mind the what finops really is right finops is about making money right it's about having an impact right of of the bottom line right there's a cost and there's a business so it's it's really about you know making money um and if you kind of keep that in mind you have to have the overall business context, right? So costs have to be represented in a business context. So what do I mean by that, right? Is whatever your business metric might be, right? So here at NOPS, right, we measure number of customers and our revenue, right? And tying, tying that to a cost, right? I can now see very easily, you know, what, you know, how it's impacting, you know, our margins, right? And so I can increase margins by one or two ways. I can increase price and that'll, that'll help, or I can reduce how, how much it costs to actually serve that revenue. And that's where FinOps kind of comes into play and being able to increase those margins accordingly. Um, and so th if there was one thing I know, you know, the most important thing to me, and you know, is is before going down this and, and making a bunch of decisions without this context right is is getting that context and you know it's really not too difficult right i mean you know it's you know it's it's meeting with your your you know for us it's you know we're a smaller company so it's a lot easier but the long and short of it is is you know finops is about you know interfacing with the business all the way down to the tech right and getting that context so so when that individual engineers making a decision on, 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 on provision and resources, they'll understand what that actually means from a business standpoint. And so if, if there was one thing that I would love to get across to everyone, if you have that, it's extremely powerful. It puts meaning to data, right? And it actually will help you and your business grow and be successful, right? Because, you know, the, the other thing is if you're not taking that account, you'll start to go down maybe a cost reduction exercise that seems to make sense uh, for you, but you're not taking into account sort of some of the business side. So the opportunity cost, um, you got, you have to take an account like examples, right? I'll give you a simple example, right? You know, we'll get on a meeting and, you know, they're, they're all of a sudden want to, you know, I'll take a simple, smaller customer, right? They want to save a thousand bucks, but you know, the amount of time it's an effort, you know, if they're throwing $40,000 worth of people time to go save a thousand bucks. Right. And that's just the RI on that. It's just makes zero sense. Right. And so I would like to take my $40,000 of people time and focus on something that maybe generate additional revenue where, where I can, you know, actually grow the business. So it's it's really if you have that in contacts, right? You you can make those trade-offs, right? So, you know, all cost reduction is not necessarily equal, I guess is 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. And to me, the most interesting angle here is decision making. Okay, so yeah. at what level, at what level you think it should happen? Because of course, every organization unique in some sense, and maybe not. Meaning that, hey, sometimes technology leaders report through CFOs even, okay, in some of the mm -hmm. more conservative companies, right? So when technology is not a driver, okay, they only, they only concerned with costs. But engineers want to experiment. So how do you find this balance? What's kind of the right way to think about technology and, and cost saving? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the cornerstone of what FinOps is, guys. I mean, at the end of the day is you're the unicorn. The unicorn, when I say the unicorn is you, you, you have the ability to talk um, from a business sta standpoint and understand the languages that they speak and then also understanding the languages that the engineers are speaking and being able to help formulate those those trade-offs, right? And and that's a foundation of what we're trying to do. It's not just a straight up, hey, go cut some costs, right? You, it, without understanding, maybe like I said, is I have no problem having engineers, right, go off and experimenting and spinning up things because I know it's it's tied to another sort of potential revenue generating thing, right? And that's why I'm saying all costs are not necessarily equal, right? And if you have that context and have, uh, you know, tools and techniques to be able to do that, then, you know, you're going to make better decisions uh, down the road. Yep, yep, yep. So costs, 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 costs. Uh, why don't we start with prediction? Okay, either way. I think I know the answer. Is there a way to kind of plan ahead and to predict those costs? Because again, everyone should report to the business. I saved this, I reached these goals, right? So what about being proactive and predicting and planning and just making, like being a little more mindful? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's useful, right? Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, I, I, I know from, you know, from the business, you know, if you, if you roll it up to the finance, what finance folks want to be able to see is predictability. Right. Um, but, you know, and so you can, you definitely can do those things. I think the key thing is to me when it comes to that is, you know, having the predictability, but it's, if you understand the data and you understand what's driving things and, and having that visibility, um, is is it's much better right um than so much about you know trying to meet you know meeting it what i call the old school you know you gotta like you gotta remember right before the cloud it was it was it was not very difficult to predict costs right you know you had a big ass data center out there right you know and you had a whole bunch of capex and you know and you know, do some variants but now you know and you had procurement groups that that control po's right it was, i call it the power of the PO. you had luxury of planning for years okay the yeah. waterfall development model yeah. all right i yeah. was in those now, trenches planning year three years ahead how yeah. about that yeah that changed yeah and you can still do it but it's 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 being able to build you know understanding and, and, and comfort within the groups. Uh, to, and like I said, if you can put business context to that, it'll justify any cost that you have out there. Good, 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 good. So look, look, we have Harsha Kelarju with us here. Thank you, Harsha, for joining because he's pursuing masters in business analytics and joined from Dallas. That's great. I love and Dallas, man. Here we go. Here we go. And he wants to learn about FinOps. All right. This is the right place. This is the right place. So please let us know what exactly happening. How do you want to develop your career? Because NAPS is a fantastic team of experts and learners and teachers and coaches. All right. So I met and I'm impressed with the talent the team has. So you're, you're at the right place. Follow NAPS right now. There's a bunch of demos there, a bunch of very helpful resources, everything you need to know about FinOps. So thank you so much for joining. Tim, um, mm -hmm. uh, turning uh, our wheels a little bit towards some practical, practical best practices, okay? So I guess we know the challenge. I guess we know the need for experimentation and no one stops innovating just because we have this uh, landscape, economic landscape out there. So right. can you share with us, right? What works, what doesn't work? Because there's best practices, there are worst practices. So can we kind of touch on both maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
number one, you can't see you focus on being able visibility or, or what we call inform, right? Number one is you can't solve problems you can't see, right? And so, you know, best practices to me, you know, and, and basic what I'm seeing out there, right, is if you can, first of all, be able to see what what is out there and then not just being able to see, but a, be able to organize those costs of those data within, within whatever type of group that actually can impact it who has the authority and the, the levers to actually impact it, right? So that would be, you know, the number one thing, right? When you look at cost, guys, I mean, when you go, I, I you know, I spent a lot of, day, you know, a lot of my day going through data, right? And, um, you know, it, it, it always amazes me how much data is out there, right? I mean, a simple curve. Uh, I, I'm a big AWS person, so I'll talk about that cost and user report that we analyze and our AI looks into. I mean, you, you know, for a decent sized company, right? Maybe say it's a 200, 250K a month spender in the cloud. I mean, just in one month, I mean, there's, you know, two, 200 million rows of cost data, right? And so it is so easy, you know, when you look at that, it is so easy to get lost and where to start, right? And so it's it's really being able to take all that and be able to organize it into, into teams, groups, whatever you guys have, right? That actually it has an impact and, and can make that change. And so, you know, one of the things that I firmly believe, right? Because I know how difficult it is is here at NOPS, we believe this is that it's a basic business right to have a free visibility platform, right? And so we, we know this is the number one concern. And so being able to get the cost to the right people. And so we offer our visibility platform for free. So you have the ability now to, to, um, you know, organize your costs uh, in, accordingly, leverage and whatever technique you guys go through, if it's account or it's by tags or about any other type of metadata that's tied to a resource to get that organized correctly so you can have that visibility, right? We, we, we don't believe in, you know, I think, you, I think companies spend enough on cloud, right? The last thing they need to do is what I call a cloud tax which is to pay an additional percent based off of spend to be able to see their data that they wanted to do. And so here at NOPS, we believe that should be free. And that's, that's, that's a core belief that uh, we think is a basic human right. <laughs> wonderful, well. manifesto. Yeah. wonderful manifesto, wonderful yeah. manifesto, Tim. Absolutely. So, yeah, Let's so repeat this. It. Oh, basic yeah. human it's, right. It's a basic human right to have a free visibility platform. Uh, and so, so, so before heading into, you know, spend time and effort, this is not easy. This is, you know, and so we're built, we built a tool to, to, to simplify this and make this easy uh, for our users to be able to take all those zillion records and be able to get these organized correctly based off all kinds of metadata that that engineers or, or companies have put on onto those resources. So that would be, you know, the first, you know, the first thing. Um, and then, you know, as you go into that, right, now you have it there, now you see it, and now you can measure it. And oh, by the way, like I said, is I love having business context on it, right? You can now go into more of those optimization plays, right? And here we believe in, you know, there's basically two levers, right? I call it pay less, right? So whatever you're running right now, get in that, you know, basically getting discounts associated to that, right? So that could be a commitment with individual resources, could be a, a, a long-term discounted commitment for your entire spend, right? And that's the lever, right? Well, there's challenges with that lever, right? And we'll go into that. And then there's the what I consider the most impactful, right? It's the hardest, but at, you know, but it is the it, the biggest impact. And it's called use less, right? So I get in calls all the time, and 
people look at me and they're like, well, what do you want to do? And I just say, you know, you want it, you want, you, you want to cut by X. I go, it's easy. It's just shut that crap down. Right. You have to learn how to leverage the cloud, right? The cloud is the most powerful thing for a business to innovate and, and be able to go fast. Right. What differentiates people, companies out there is, is the ability to, to go fast and the and ability to adjust based off of conditions. Right. You did not have that flexibility in a data center. You have that within the cloud. Right. And so, you know, if you really want to get optimized, it's basic, basically being able to le leverage the elasticity of the cloud to match supply and demand. Right. And so your traditional model will say, go do use less first, right? So get everything kind of organized uh, accordingly, right size on a periodic better basis. And then, you know, then lock yourself into a pay less kind of pricing model, which is where you have a commitment, right? Well, that's great for a point in time, but as conditions continue to change, right? Over time, right? That may not be a smart decision later on right because you've kind of locked yourself in here at nops we believe in not we believe in how can i you know if we know the number one lever is use less how can i help companies still save less on the pay less but not have a commitment right and so here at nops we do that and so we we just we we leverage uh, you know, there's there's other solutions out there too to do some similar things. But at the end of the day is it's about removing the commitment by giving you the discount, right? So here at NOPS, we basically take those commitments and it's our responsibility of those commitments and, and being able to either get rid of them or, or, or eat them, as I like to say, right? My ultimate goal is I want the, I want to give companies the freedom, the flexibility of using use less right because like i said is if if you really want to have impact and you really want to be able to be innovative and make changes as conditions change you need you need you need that flexibility so jyoti sharma in our audience thank you for joining what we say we have to pay for that only she's asking yeah i mean if you're asking about that solution right and so like I said, is if, 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 a, if a, a cloud management company puts their money where their mouth is, right, is their, their concept is, you know, like I said, don't pay for, you know, a, a cloud tax and a bunch of recommendations, right, where it's hard to measure the RI is, you know, here, if we, if, if we can't automate it, we can't, you know, we're not going to charge. So whenever we, you leverage some of our automation, and that's continuing to grow right it's just a percent of that savings that uh that you pay a fee for and so we're very visible on what the fee is we provide the data in you know i always say quote quote unquote real time right it's as fast as i can get the data from any of these service providers right and so you can measure your roi all the time right and so justifying spend um, and justifying things is, is, is really what we're trying to help our companies are, right? We want companies to focus, right? Like I said, is your number one resource cost, right? Is, is people on this call, it's the people doing the work, right? And so, and, and cloud spend in most company, you know, it's, you know, it's a line item and it's just a significant line item, but it doesn't even compare to people cost. And so if I can, automate as much of these cost optimization things that you that you turn on right that's why we're, we're really trying to impact Fantastic. and so we yeah. just we, we just don't have to pay less but we like i said we'll talk about the use use less now use less is the number one cost saving thing but guess what it's also the hardest right um and why is it hard Right. If you look at these surveys out there, right, and it's it's clear, you know, we have these conversations all the time with customers, right? Is it's great, but I can't. I can, or you know, there's there's all kinds of reasons why folks won't will turn something off, 
move it to the right box and all this kind of stuff. So the number one thing is getting the engineer to do it, right? Well, that, that engineer or the person responsible for that particular cost has a zillion things that they have to do, right? You know, they're getting pulled in a ton of different directions, right? So what we're focused on is, is, is not just a recommendation. The recommendation is good. Anybody can do that, right? It's all AI, right? I mean, this is not any special secret sauce that any company can say, oh, yeah, our, ours is better, right? You're going to get a recommendation. How do you get someone to do it? Right is is where the challenge, and that's what we're focused on completely. Is focusing on automation that makes it easier, and you know, almost you know, tran not transparent to that engineer to make those changes. Right, and so if you crack that nut, which we feel pretty confident, we 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 we're well on our way at cracking that nut. Is next thing you know is you can you can really make this you can change it from hard to easy on the use less right so my famous quote right so my my dad worked at nasa during the apollo right and so during the apollo so you know i'm an old man so at the end of the day it was in the 60s right and so if they could put a man on the moon with a slide roller right there are no com real computers back then we can figure out how to automate and be able to do this automatically or with very little effort on the engineering side to to take advantage of these things i love it i love it team this is another manifesto <laughs> besides the basic human the right basic human right the basic human right people listening to us in the audience write it down in front of you and just look at it every morning just for some motivation kick okay basic human right to have a free, transparent platform that helps you. And I'll add to we're that the second gonna, manifesto. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're going to, we're going to, uh, and so, you know, the only way that we can make money is if we save you money and we make you, we, you know, and you make money with when you save money, right? So long and short of it is the entire company from the person at the front desk to the CEO is focused on how can we make this easier that people can take advantage companies can take advantage of this and and really have an impact because it it's real it is real out there guys i mean i know it is is you know is getting getting the engineer to do it right and you mentioned they have a confidence in 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 the recommendations and in the automation that it won't impact their daily life right because the last thing you want is you make some cost recommendation and, and and at the end of the day it's a wash because you've taken down some you know critical service right and so you know if we're focused and we can nail that man this thing opens up you know pandora's box right so but then today as that's what we're trying to do right and you know um from you know you know, I, I'll leave it. I was watching the news last night. So they had this article. I just, you know, it's about innovation and why I, I, I'm not a big fan of commitments, right? You know, everybody, you know, when they come in and they, they talk about doing this, oh, yeah, I can do this. And I, I'm always saying you're, you're losing your freedom, right? And, and you take that, everybody's probably heard of it, right? Is this chat GPT, right? It's this thing came out. And it's been consumed and it's just changed the way content is, is written, you know, all the way around. Right. And no one saw that coming. Right. You got the biggest company, one of the biggest company. I don't know if it is the biggest, but, you know, because it changes all the time. But you got Google sweating. Right. They live right down the street from me, sweating over this technology. Right. And it happened overnight. Right. And so. It, it changes a lot of different things. So that's, you know, so here at InOps, like I said, is if I can remove some of those commitments, give you the flexibility to innovate, be able to automate some of these cost things, right? I'm allowing you to adjust to these changing conditions, right? And so. we do live in data world. You mentioned you mentioned the mounting data, okay, on everyone. Again, Ica Javed is commenting decluttering useless data. Okay, so that's a big effort, right? That takes a lot of effort, and you just mentioned that. And well, that's, that's, what, that's, yeah. that's what we're. That's what you know. If you look at, you know, 
what I'm trying to do here at NOPS, right, is, is making that extremely easy, right? And so getting that data, and like it's like she's saying, it's 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 chaos if you if it, out there, right? And so there's all kinds of information that can help us organize that for the customers to provide them that that flexibility. And that's what we're doing here to make this simpler, to get to there faster, right? So they can make decisions faster and innovate. Absolutely. Tim, time is flying, okay? We can stay on forever. I can talk forever, guys. I know, because you are a wisdom, wisdom carrier, okay? And you get this experience, this authentic experience every day in the comments out there. Tell us if you want another session with Tim, okay? Because we can cover lots of different other aspects, all right? But for today, just to be mindful of everyone's time, Tim, how about a few takeaways, okay? Mm -hmm. Something to remember this session by and just to send our audience off to do great things. Yeah, I mean, first of all, feel free to reach out to me on, on LinkedIn if you have any follow-ups, right? I, you know, I mean, this is my passion as you make it and get out of this, right? Um, my passion is, 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 is trying to, to help you during this journey and, and giving you, giving you ideas and, and tools and techniques to how to, how to tackle it because it can be overwhelming. So feel free to reach out to me directly. And then, like I said, you can see on there, right? You want to see the put, you know, proof in the pudding Get started. It's free. So, you know, what's better than free, right? The only time that we will ever charge is if you ever you turn on, you want to turn on some of the automated solutions. And so get you, you know, come out, take a look at it and let's, let's, uh, see what we can do there. Absolutely. And we have the ticker running here. Get started. FinApps on NApps today. There is easy link over there. So please learn if you don't know about NApps already. There are a bunch of resources over there. Fantastic team waiting for your call, waiting to educate you and to help to help you do better. Team, thank you so very much. This is fantastic hey, conversation. Yeah, thanks for your guys' time. I appreciate it. Thanks everyone for joining. Thank you.